One of our most popular videos of all time is called How to Read Notes. And this tells me that there are a lot of us out there that want to learn about reading notes and how to do it better. So I thought it would be a great idea to create another video on how to read notes. So we're calling this one How to Read Notes Part 2. Now, before we dive in to all the new stuff, all the new tips and tricks and even cheats to help you read notes more efficiently and faster and actually maybe have fun while you're doing it, we're going to review a couple of the main points from our previous video, just as a little refresher course for those of you that might be joining us for the first time. So in notation, we have something called the treble clef. And the treble clef, it's just so pretty. It's got a nice little curl and swoop. And that usually means you're going to be playing with your right hand. We also have a symbol called the bass clef, which kind of looks like half a heart with dots. Or like an ear, whatever you want to go with. That's called the bass clef. So the treble clef usually means we're going to play with our right hand and the bass clef usually means we're going to play with our left hand. Now the treble clef and the bass clef each live on a series of lines and spaces. So there's always going to be five lines and four spaces for the treble clef and five lines and four spaces for the bass clef. And they live together on something called the grand staff which is all connected beautifully like this and it creates basically the template for all the music we're gonna play over there at the piano. So, one of my favorite notes, and before we even get into all the other note names, we're gonna talk about middle C, because middle C lives outside of the lines and spaces of the treble clef, and outside of the lines and spaces of the bass clef, and it's a super important note because it connects the two clefs. So here's what I mean. When you see a note that lives on a line below the treble clef, it's kind of like they're like in no man's land, it's middle C. So you see one line extra, it's a little short, short little line, there's a note on it, below the treble clef, that's middle C. That tells you to play the C in the middle part of your piano with your right hand. Now, you might see a note above the bass clef, again, on its own little line, kind of in no man's land again. This is also middle C. So, when you see that, you're gonna play the note in the middle part of your piano with your left hand. So this is C, you're gonna play with your left hand, middle C, see it written kind of close to the treble clef, you play it with your right hand, same note. Now the beautiful thing about middle C is that you can take that as a starting point and simply count up your alphabet to get all the note names for all the notes in the treble clef. So middle C is C, you just keep going. D, E, F, G, etc until you run out of lines and spaces. And those are the treble clef note names. You could do the same thing with the bass clef. You can start on middle C and this time work backwards, down from middle C. C, B, A, G, F, until you run out of space. Those are the note names. It's that simple. It's how it works. Back in the good old days when I was taking music lessons, I was taught to use acronyms to figure out the note names. So for the treble clef, I had Face, F-A-C-E for the spaces, and every good boy deserves fries for the lines. And for the bass clef, I had uh, all cows eat grass for the spaces, and good boys deserve fries for the lines. Now that's great, but it creates a, a misconception that somehow the treble clef and the bass clef are their own separate things. And as you noticed with middle C, they're not. It's all one continuation, continuum. I'm not really sure the right word to use there, but you get what I'm saying. So one of the most revolutionary discoveries I have ever made about sight reading is that you don't actually have to read every single note. Let that sink in for a minute because I was raised to believe that I had to just see those notes on those lines and spaces and have it memorized. And guess what? five years, 10 years, 12 years, 15, maybe even 20 years later, that's not how I get through reading music. I guess, I cheat. And when I figured out how to do that, suddenly sight reading went from being awful, an awful experience to being something I actually enjoy doing. So I'm gonna teach you how to see all those lines and spaces and all those notes on the staff and actually make sense of them quickly. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is landmark notes. And this is gonna be what helps you negotiate all the other notes. Now, when I say landmark notes, I'm just referring to a couple of notes that you like really memorize and make best friends with on both the treble and bass clefs because if you can do that, then everything else becomes easy. So we've talked about middle C already. That makes a fabulous landmark note. When you see that one, you've got it memorized, you know what it is, you know where it is, you know how to play it. 
A great landmark note for the treble clef, in addition to middle C, is the G line. Because G, this is a fun fact for you, uh, the treble clef has a nickname, and its nickname is the G clef. And look at that sweet little curl of the treble clef. It actually wraps around line two of the treble clef, which is G. So it's really easy to kind of memorize that the second line up from the bottom is G. So lock that down. I also like to use high C as my next landmark note. High C lives the second space down from the top of the treble clef, right there. And it just it's just easy for my eyes to kind of gravitate there. So when I see a note there, I just know that's high C, the C above middle C. So if I have those things memorized, it's very easy to then kind of guesstimate my way through the rest of the notes. So this is where we're gonna take our landmark notes information and tie it into the wonderful world of intervals. So intervals is just a fancy way of saying the space from one note to the next note. So you might see our best friend middle C, and then you'll see a note just after it. Now they can be separate, so you can see a C. I'm gonna play it, middle C, and then Next to that, you'll see a D. I'm not seeing that note. I'm not seeing D and going, that's a C and that's a D. I'm seeing it and thinking to myself, that's C and the next note is just one up from C. So if I see a whole sequence of notes that are moving in little steps like that from a line to a space to a line to a space to a line to a space, I'm not reading them. I'm reading the first note, C, and I'm just moving my hand up with those notes as far as they go. And if they're moving backwards, if they're moving down, it's the same thing. I just simply move my hand back down in steps. I read that first note, and I move my hand back down in steps. And that's really the long and the short of it. Now, these notes can be kind of separate. So C, and then over there, we've got our next guy, which is just a step up, which is gonna be D, because I know my musical alphabet. Or they can be right touching each other, which means you're gonna play them at the same time. The next interval I wanna look at is the third. Now, thirds are really quick and easy to identify. You can tell a third right away because it always goes from a line to the next possible line or a space to the next possible space. So that shape always looks the same. So let's say I see a note pop up on the treble clef. It's on the second line. That's the G line because we've memorized that as a landmark note. Yay! And then I see another note pop up after that and it is on the line above the G. I'm not reading that note. I'm aware that I'm playing G and I'm aware that the next note is a third above that or a jump. I call it a jump because we're just skipping. We're just skipping a note, we're jumping over it. That's how thirds work, it's amazing. So if you see a line to a line or a space to a space, you know what to do. So for fourths, let's head to the bass clef because we got to practice there too. Uh, we're going to build some fourths in the bass clef but first we need to select some landmark notes. So, middle C obviously, but let's add a couple more. I like to use F because, you guessed it, the bass clef has a nickname and it is the F clef. And that's because that big circle part before you kind of go into the half heart is on the line that is the note F. So we can just see the second line down from the top and be that is F. I also like to use low C as a second space up from the bottom of the bass clef. It's just quick and easy for me to see that and know what note it is. So there's your landmark notes for the bass clef. A fourth in the bass clef, so or a treble clef, doesn't matter where you are, a fourth simply is a little bit further apart than a third. And you're gonna notice that a fourth always goes from a line to a space or a space to a line. So let's build a fourth. Let's use low C, which is the C below middle C. And we know that we're not playing a third because this next note isn't on a space. Um, it's on a line and it's a little stretchier, a little bigger than that third looked. So we have a fourth. I didn't have to read it. I mean, kind of cool because that F actually sits on a landmark note. So I've kind of memorized it, but that's how a fourth sounds and looks. And you can have those anywhere on the bass clef. Anytime you see that shape, read the note that's closest to your landmark note and then build spatially on the keyboard the fourth below that. Now fifths. Fifths are my favorite because they're actually, I feel like they're pretty easy to read. They're just like an expanded out third because like thirds, they always move from a line to a line or a space to a space, but they're too far apart to be a third. And so that's how you can quickly and easily identify a fifth. 
So here are some examples of what fifths will look like on both the treble clef and the bass clef. When you see these, simply pick the note that jumps out at you that you've memorized as one of your landmark notes and then create that shape above or below it. So a C, um, middle C and treble clef, and I see this next note here, boom, I've got a fifth. Okay, so now I'm going to see, um, let's do G in the treble clef, and then the note just past that. It's quite a distance, it's also a line note. It's a fifth. So you'll, it'll be a little bit of trial and error, but this is kind of how I go through it. Sixths. That's a hard word to say. And sixths are not terribly difficult to notice either because they're just a little bit farther apart than a fifth. And we're back on our line to space or space to line concept for the sixths. So if you see notes that are kind of far apart and you notice this one's a line one and this one's a space one, chances are it's a sixth. Find the nearest landmark note. Use it to help you figure out the first note of your sixth, and you're good to go. Sevenths. Now this is where things can get kind of tricky, because this is a big space, and I find that the notes that are close together are really easy to figure out, but when you get to these more sort of spread out distances, it's a little bit more challenging, and that's okay. You have a few ways you can approach this. You can notice that the notes are looking pretty far apart. Let's go from C all the way up to B. So you can see that's a big distance, it's a big gap. So I might notice that I have a landmark note right above that B. So I'll go, okay, well I know middle C, I'm gonna play that one. And the next note, well there's my landmark C up there and this one's just one below it. So you kind of work backwards using those landmarks. It's all about combining your skills in a way that works really well for you. An octave or an eighth, it's really far apart. So you can kind of use that as your as your guide, you can go, well, those notes are quite a distance away from each other. If you see an octave shown in the treble clef, maybe middle C and then high C, those are both landmark notes. Maybe you see it on E and then the E above that. So I would use my middle C to help me read this E and I go, okay, C, D, E. And then I would use my landmark note of C up here to go C, D, E. You could also use your acronyms. Honestly, every time I teach a lesson on how to read notes, I'll give an idea and then the student always has the feedback to say like, I used to do it this way or this I found really helpful. There are so many ways you can approach reading notes and I think the most important thing, I, I said it earlier, is just allow yourself to get creative and mix and match different thinking in a way that works for you so that you're not sitting there going, Every good boy deserves fudge, but, but you're able to move through this a little bit more quickly and efficiently. So we've talked about intervals and how to quickly identify them and recognize them and understand how to play them. We've talked about landmark notes and how landmark notes can help us to just quickly figure out certain notes without having to read every single one of them. And then finally, look for patterns. A lot of times music will have, you know, oh, we're just moving up in steps, up and down, up and down. Uh, read the first note, follow the pattern as it moves up and down. And then just pay attention, are the notes stepping up and stepping down? Are they moving in thirds and skips? Just negotiate based on ups and downs, intervals, and using those landmark notes. And honestly, a combination of those things, you're gonna be sight reading music like a boss in no time. So to put this all into practice, because I can talk and talk and talk and talk till the cows come home. Is that still a saying that we use these days? I don't know. I have family that is dairy farmers. The cows go out and then they come home. It can take a while. We can talk about this for a long time, but what you really need to do to get good at sight reading is simply practice this skill. So I've got a piece of music that we're gonna look at. We have intervals, lots and lots of intervals, because that's what music is made of. We've got treble clef notes and we've got bass clef notes. We've got notes that are separate and then we've got notes stacked on top of each other, which just simply means to play them at the same time. So I'm gonna talk you through this music so you can understand the process and then it'll be up to you to go practice your sight reading. So here we go. So the first thing I noticed, landmark note, treble clef, middle C, look at that. There's two of them, yay. And then the note coming up is definitely not a jump, it's a fourth. So we've got an F there, and then, oh, we've got a landmark note. I know that one, I memorized it, second line, treble clef, G clef, two of those, and then I don't even think about it, we're just stepping down a note. And then, oh look it, we're stepping down another note, and then we're moving from a line to the next line. So that's a skip, or a jump, or a third, whatever you wanna call it. Same thing's happening again, and then we're just moving down in a step, in a step, and then, oh, we're going down a third, it's skipping, and then we're stepping. That's all that's happening. With my left hand, I've got 
intervals that are played on top of each other, so two notes at once. Uh, so I'm reading landmark notes. That first low note is C because I memorized it. You can also use your acronyms if you want to. And I see that shape and I just know it's a fifth because I've practiced this a lot. But you can notice space note, space note, definitely bigger than a third, so it's a fifth. And I've got another fifth. And then, using my landmark notes for this next one, I'm immediately identifying it's the third because those notes are going from a line to the next possible line. I know that bottom note is following that F clef landmark note. So I'm gonna play that, guess this one, boom, I've got it. And then I've got another one of those. So I'm gonna leave you to figure out the rest of the music. There's lots more here for you to look at, um, but this will be really, really good practice for you to practice reading your notes, guessing your intervals, and combine all of your skills. So use those acronyms, face and all cows eat grass, whatever you need to, as you need to. But I really wanna encourage you to get those landmark notes. You can pick the ones that I talked about with you today, or you can cr create your own landmarks, and then use those to help you navigate. Memorize your interval shapes, do some guessing, see what happens. Uh, so, I would love to hear from you. How is your sight reading journey going? Comment below, and most of all, happy practicing.